I want to share something with you today that is very close to my heart and has been so important for me to learn in my spiritual walk. You see, for a long time, I felt like I'm constantly letting God down. I'm constantly betraying God. I'm constantly going against him. Look at me, like God saved me out of the muck and the mire of my sin. And now I can't seem to get a hold of myself. I keep falling into, what do I do? How do I get out of this? How do I break free from this? If this has been you in some sense, this video is for you. In today's video as well, I'm going to share with you three lies that Satan wants to tell you to keep you in this cycle. Okay, I'm going to map out what this cycle looks like. Okay, it's like this. It begins with failure. Okay, failure is sin. You, you screw up. You mess up. You look at that thing online that you shouldn't. You um, you lie. You say something that you know was false or you try to exaggerate the truth to make yourself look better. You failed in some way. What happens usually? Well, you feel sad about it. You feel shame about it. You feel disgusted with yourself. You feel frustrated. Dang, I'm, I, I screwed up again. I can't believe I did this. Like, God saved me and I, and I keep doing this. Like, what's going on? Am I even a Christian? What, what, what's the problem? And you get in this, this cycle, right, of failure, then shame and sadness. And then you say, okay, I'm going to double down. I'm going to put that much more effort here. I, I can do this. I can figure this out. I can be a good Christian. And that's where the willpower comes in. Okay, I can do this. But what inevitably happens is you fail again. And what does that do? It makes you more frustrated. It makes you more sad. It makes you more angry. It makes you more question more of your salvation. And inevitably, that failure turns to hopelessness. And it sucks. And it feels awful. And it feels like you can't break free from this. Okay, I'm going to tell you a story first. And then I'm going to share with you a better cycle that we can get into. A better cycle that we're called into. Okay, first, the story. This is the story of Peter. Now, a lot of you are going to be familiar with the disciple or the apostle Peter. Peter was one of the fiercest disciples. At many occasions, he would say to Jesus, you know, Jesus will never let anything happen to you. Like nothing will protect you. We have you. You can't die. Like I, I'm going to be there for you. And he was this fierce, uh, really intense disciple. Out of all the disciples, really, when you look at them, at least for me, Peter seems like one of the ones where it's like he is going to be with Jesus till the end. Well, a lot of you you guys know the story already that even though all these Peter said all these things and he was present with Jesus through all throughout all of these teachings that when push came to shove Jesus was being questioned. He was a lot of heat was being put on him. Things were escalating quickly and here Peter was out in the courtyard and a slave girl comes up to him and asks, "Wait a minute. Weren't you with Jesus? Weren't you one of his disciples?" And Peter, feeling the heat as well, says, no, 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 I, I don't know him. I, I'm, not w I'm not with him. And again, they ask, oh, wait, no, I think you are. I think you're with him. No, I'm not. I'm pretty sure I, I saw you with him. Just the other, no, I I've never seen him. I've never spoken to him. I don't know that man. And in that moment... The prophecy that Jesus told about Peter, that he would deny him three times before the rooster crowed, came true. But also within Peter's own heart, he knew, oh my goodness, what have I done? Put yourself in that position for a second. Maybe you relate to that. What have I done? I've spent time with him. I've loved him. He said he loved me. I, I, I'm his disciple. I'm his friend. How could I have done this? How could I do this? And then the fear starts to set in. Oh man. He was right. Surely he'll reject me now. Surely he could never love me now. Surely he could never receive me back now. He probably despises me. So what do we even do when we're faced with our own failure, when we're faced with hopelessness, when we're faced with these things that we believe that, okay, God could never receive me. God would reject me. We go back to our old way of life. And Peter literally does that. He goes fishing. What is the first lie that we can identify here within this circumstance? It's that when I betray God, God cannot bridge that gap. God cannot bridge that gap with his love. If I betray him, if I go against him, maybe that's one time, maybe that's two times or a hundred times. If I betray God a hundred times, that means that's too far. God cannot forgive me. God cannot bridge that gap. In fact, he doesn't want me anymore. 
Is that true? What we know from the scriptures in Romans 8, neither height nor depth nor principalities nor powers nor all these things, none of these things can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus. Okay, we know this isn't true in in our mind. We know this is true, but it, it feels like, no, this is too far. This is too far because we underestimate the grace of God. We underestimate the love of God. And we underestimate the power of God on the cross to forgive sins. We feel like, no, my sin is so much more. No, friend, God's grace and his mercy and his love and his sacrifice is so much more. Okay, it gets to the point where Jesus and Peter are talking and Jesus asked Peter a very specific question. Peter, do you love me? Now, some people think that this is Jesus trying to get information from Peter. Okay, you know, Jesus, you know, he knows Peter has betrayed him, but, and, and Peter's fishing now. And so Jesus really wants to see, okay, where is Peter at? Does he love me still or does he not? Okay, I'm going to ask him to see what's up. I don't believe that's what's going on at all. Jesus knows what Peter, who Peter is. And he knows what Peter loves, and he knows his relationship with Peter, even in the midst of Peter's betrayal. So he asks him not to say, okay, not to information gather, but to remind Peter of where his love is, to remind Peter of where his allegiance is. In the midst of that cycle that I showed you, our failure, our shame, our sadness, and then more effort, right? Satan wants to convince you that, man, hey, Isaac, you failed again. You don't even love God, do you? You don't even love him. What does that lead you? Depression, shame, disgust. It doesn't lead you to repentance. It leads you to just cowering into a ball in the corner, not wanting to look at Jesus because, man, I guess I don't love him. I guess I don't love him. Here's the thing. You do love God. If you are his children, your love is just imperfect. And that's what Jesus, I believe, was trying to show Peter was that, hey, you love me, but your love is imperfect. But I'm going to remind you that, hey, Peter, do you love me? Peter says, yeah, I love you, Lord. He knows Peter. Even look at verse 7 here. That disciple whom Jesus loved therefore said to Peter, it is the Lord. When Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment for it was stripped off for work and he threw himself into the sea. That's how Peter reacted. After he had betrayed Jesus, after he was in the boat, after he was fishing, da, 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 da. He saw Jesus and he jumped. He just threw himself into the water. Why? Because he loved Jesus. He loved Jesus. That wasn't the question. It was to remind Peter, hey, you love me. Here's the third and final lie that Satan tries to tell us. And then I'm going to share with you the new cycle that you should be a part of. But here's the deal is that Satan tries to convince you that the battle isn't part of God's plan. You feel like this is a lie. You feel like this is a struggle. You feel like, man, I'm failing sometimes. I'm winning sometimes. And it just feels like a lot. And you get overwhelmed and you start to question like, what am I doing wrong? What am I doing wrong? Why can't I get out of this? Well, friend, the fact that you're in this, that testifies to me that that your faith is real, that your relationship with God is real because it is hard because we do struggle against the flesh. I would be way more concerned about somebody that never struggled against their flesh, that was apathetic to failing, that was apathetic to falling into sin. Look, that's not you. No, you, you're, you're interested. This, this, the reason, the reason you're watching this video is that this is a concern to you, that you want to figure out how can I break free? How can I be free from this? How can I serve God? How can I not be doing these things that I know grieve God? And that in and of itself is a sign that you love him. You love God. Okay, here we are. That took a second, but let's begin the cycle here with failure, with sin. We screwed up. We messed up. But then we feel conviction, right? Christians, we feel the conviction of the Holy Spirit. You did something wrong. You feel that guilt. And what does that draw you to? It shouldn't draw you to guilt or shame, even though sometimes it does. It should draw you to a place of repentance. God, have mercy on me, a sinner. And then where does it go? Reaffirm identity. Who are you in Christ? You're part of the royal priesthood of God. You're not just disgusting. You're not just stupid. You're not just dumb. You didn't just, you know, all these things that you want to tell yourself or get wrapped up in self-hate. You need to battle that, battle that if you're dealing with shame, with reaffirming your identity. Who am I to God now? I am his child. 
And then where do we go? Rely on God's power. Before it was all willpower, before it was all effort, before it was all just trying to be a good Christian, that's not what it's about now. It's humbly submitting yourself to God, saying, God, I need you. I can't do this on my own. I, I've, I'm struggling with this. Can you please give me the power? And God is more than able to deliver us from temptation. That's what the Bible says. And where does that land us? Well, sometimes it lands us in victory. It's it's conquering different parts of our, our sin that are just getting at us, right? But then sometimes it's failure too, right? We will still stumble. We will still fall. But God graciously receives us back. And then we continue on the cycle again. Conviction, repentance, reaffirm that identity and rely on God's power. I hope this video has helped you. And if it has, I encourage you to subscribe because I'm putting out new videos like this all the time. And if you want to support what I'm doing, click the link in my description and join Patreon today. You get all sorts of port perks, but as well as that, you're just supporting my ministry of equipping people to follow Jesus daily. Until next time, God bless.